G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday here in Australia, market is down ever so slightly, 2.05 trillion, so down 1.2%, but really just kind of travelling sideways. Bitcoin dominance just hovering around 38%, it used to be hovering sort of 40, 39%, now it's really kind of 39, 38%. Where's it going to go from there? A little bit of volume, not a whole lot. Bitcoin price under 42000 and gas prices continue to come down. But they generally come down a little bit and then soar back up as soon as there's a little bit of uh, green. And that's usually when the prices start to go up. But when the prices go down, it continues to get cheaper and cheaper. So just something to keep in mind. The gas fees will likely get cheaper if the prices continue to go down. If they continue to go up, well, then the prices will continue to go up as well. All right, let's have a look. Last 24 hours, what's done well considering the market's down 1.2%? What is that? Up something ridiculous. I'm going to say that came from outside the top 100 and because it's had a big pump, has pushed its way into the top 100 but never heard of it, know nothing about it. Safe Moon, good Lord, up 15%, but still always sitting at two, so it's hard to know how is it up 15%. Uh, stacks, nice little move, 15% there, but again, we need to remember, coins are going up, but they're generally going down in the sort of longer trend at the moment. Remembering the trend is your friend, and the trend is downwards at the moment. YFI had a little bit of a move there, so up 5%. So look, there's some movers. One really sort of, you know, completely crazy one which again i'll never offer you financial advice but i wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole because it's already pumped so much and coins that are really really low they don't take much money to come in to pump them up a whole lot so that's also something you need to remember you know you can think oh that means there's so much money in there and buy in and then when you try and sell they've already taken their money out the price is dumped and then there's not enough liquidity for you to even get your money out so just be very very careful keep that in mind all right considering the market's down 1.2 percent what hasn't fared too well there we go, there we go. My is down, aid is down. So again, coins will pump one day and it looks really, really good and then they're dumping the decks. I mean, Matic got up to $2.80 and now it's back down to $2 again. So yeah, it's a choppy kind of market at the moment, but again, generally trending downwards. The trend is your friend, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I can't say this enough. I'm not offering you financial advice. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. And I've been wrong before, so don't just go all right well he says uh it's all doom and gloom i'm not saying it's all doom and gloom i'm just saying we're trending down at the moment so you've got to be careful trying to jump in this is just proper choppy action from a majority of these coins it all looks good really now and then in a few days time it looks really bad and then it'll look you know like it's getting better again and then it'll be bad again so just buyer beware it is it, it's for traders if you're you know breaking uh doing the breakout trades and things like that you know you can probably make some money but for investors uh very easy to get chopped up but again if you really like uh any of these projects most of them are down significantly from their old all-time highs so is it a bad time to buy no because it's at a discount is it at the best price to buy well, no, maybe not as well because everything's just trending down. And again, markets across the board, it's not like it's just the crypto markets that are getting hit. It's all markets at the moment. So yeah, my personal advice, never financial, is just buy, beware, be careful. If there's a project you like and you want to buy at a discount, DCA, dollar cost average in just a little bit, a little bit, every you know, couple of days, couple of weeks, whatever it is, however you do it, just buy a little bit. But hold on to whatever cash you can at the moment until we see some kind of formation that changes the narrative. Because at the moment, the narrative is not good. It's not awful. We're not talking bear market just yet, but it's going down. All right, let's move on and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. And again, this is the perfect example. Have a look. We've been going down since November, since early November. We're already starting to get halfway through January. We're now moving towards February. That's months of downside, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to think that that means we're getting close to the bottom, and hopefully this is the bottom. But look at this. it You know, this downwards trending uh, wedge uh, channel, uh, falling wedge is what it's called. Sorry, that was the word I was looking for. You know, we bounced up, we play around on the line, and then we just fall down. And we've had some fake outs and little things, and then we just keep falling down. 
hopefully this is the bottom ladies and gentlemen i'm hoping it is but at the moment it keeps falling and the penultimate kind of point to where this goes is really down here at the low kind of 30,000. Now that doesn't mean it has to go down there, but I just need to see something that makes me convinced that we're not gonna go down lower. Look at where this is right now. Now it's still early in the day over there, but the market's already dropped and it's getting very close to the bottom of these candles. Not the wicks, the actual candle bodies, we're right there. I don't think it's gonna to take too much for us to get down there. And I really think if we get down into this $40,000 level, we're gonna fall down pretty quickly like we did here. And we're gonna to start to test the $37,000 level. Now I hope I'm wrong. I've been wrong before. And like I said, I'll be glad if I am wrong, but I'll also be somewhat glad if I'm right as well, because I'm gonna to continue to buy the dip, but I'm gonna be careful about buying the dip and not just doing anything crazy at any one time in case I'm completely wrong, and this is legitimately a bear market, and we've still got till basically next November before we sort of hit the bottom, then that would be probably a really bad idea to be throwing all your money into something when Bitcoin's at 37,000, and it may go down to you know, $10,000, or who knows what the bottom might be, if 70,000 or sort of 69,000 truly was the top. All right, let's have a look at Ethereum. How's Ethereum doing? Again, much the same. It's playing out a very similar pattern, except for the, you know, this wasn't the top. The top was kind of back here, just ever so slightly, but lower highs, lower lows. And now look at this. We've got this little range down here, and look where it is. It's oh so close to the bottom of these candles. It's very close. And I think if it loses $3,000, I think it's coming down to here fairly quickly. I think we're going to get down to, let's say, sort of 2800 I think we're gonna get down to there quickly. And then really once we get to there, it's not much of a drop until we get down to you know, $2,650. Sort of and I definitely think uh, we should be able to find some good support here, but it's not guaranteed, ladies and gentlemen. That is the scary thing. So just beware. I'd love to be able to bring you, you know, all oh, bullish news, it's all going up from here. That is the bottom it's in. And yeah, I'd love to be able to do that. I just don't know if it is and I'm not sold that it is so hence why I'm not making any crazy moves at the moment I've been saying that for days and days and days and if the market turns around and absolutely rockets off you know that's good for everyone but I would hate to be telling you that that you know don't worry the bottom's in and it's going up from here like this is you know again that's why I'll never offer you financial advice but I'd hate to be kind of singing that song when I myself am unsure and just kind of don't believe it my gut feeling is we're going lower i've been wrong before i said that before and i'll say it again i'll be wrong again ladies and gentlemen and if i'm wrong this time that is great and if it continues to go up from here that is you know that's the best news for everyone but there's some stories that i'm going to show you that make me a little bit worried about why we might be going down but i'm also going to bring you the flip side there's still millions and millions and even hundreds of millions of dollars being poured into the crypto space because the big money they're not looking about where it's going to go tomorrow because they honestly don't know that's the truth they've got a sneaky suspicion and they may do things in the market to push it to a certain price whether that be up or down but they don't know exactly where it's going and they generally don't have enough of a control that they can you know just completely dictate the market all by themselves so we'll move on to that but again ethereum i get the feeling like i'd be setting some buy orders in around two thousand eight hundred dollars and look it might not come all the way down to there it might come to sort of somewhere around here which is well that's close enough let's say two thousand uh two thousand yeah, 900 down to 2,800, I think would not be a bad place to put in a buy order. Again, I wouldn't be throwing everything at it because if this doesn't hold, I think, and again, if I th if Bitcoin goes down to that kind of $32,500 level, I think you're going to see Ethereum down here at about 1,900. And if we are in a bear market, which is definitely a possibility, I don't believe it, but we could be, then... <laughs> I think it's entirely possible that we're going to see Bitcoin, uh, sorry, Ethereum come down to somewhere around about here. I think there's a very good chance that we could start to see some things like, you know, five hundred dollars. You know, maybe not, but definitely, you know, come back and retest some of this, and that'd be quite scary. It's hard to know. So that's 
you know, that's why I give you, uh, you know, my general kind of take on where I think think things might be going because I play a pretty conservative uh, game in cryptocurrencies and it's getting more and more conservative the longer I'm in it. It's not that I don't take any risks. Crypto is a risk, but so is investing for that matter. But I also, I'm not too... I don't try and rush out and find the newest, hottest project. I like to wait for things to kind of prove themselves. Yeah, you can get the crazy good gains getting into things really early, but a lot of the time, unless you're really good at it, you probably won't take enough profits uh, early on and then you can get burnt and there's rug pulls and all sorts of things. So I'm an investor. I'd rather just wait and see if a project's got some something good behind it and wait to buy it on a good dip. And that's, yeah, that's my thesis. But Ethereum looking shaky and like I said I reckon about sort of 29 to 2800 would not be a bad place to put in a buy order but for me and I am doing that I have done that I'm not chucking all my money in I really am not I need to see a trend reversal and I just haven't seen that yet and again all markets we looked at that the last couple of days you know you name it every single sector has been down I need them to turn around and change for then Bitcoin to turn around and change now Bitcoin could be the first one i.e. crypto because Bitcoin crypto we can consider them very similar things Bitcoin could lead the way it could be the first to turn uh, and you know that will dictate where the rest of the markets uh, might be going Generally, it's not, but it might. But what I do know is based on past history, and it's only based on past history. History doesn't dictate the future, but it's a good indicator, is when Bitcoin does turn around, it'll go up harder than the others. That's just the way it does. It goes down harder than the others, and it goes up harder than the others. That's what I like about it. I like the upside. The downside I can take after being in it for a few years, but it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, and it doesn't mean it doesn't scare me at times, and it doesn't mean I don't want to panic sell at times. I absolutely do. But I've got better at that, and I rarely ever do that. I've still done it on occasions. Uh, it's been a while since I've panic sold. But again, I also know when sometimes you just got to cut your losses, and that's another hard thing to do. People say, you know, just wait for it to go back up or let it go to zero you know again each to their own but sometimes i just look at projects and things that are going on and go you know what not worth it i'll just take that loss because the ones that have done well for me have more than made up for any losses that i get these days hopefully it stays that way in the future all right total crypto market cap let's have a look again rolled over it's still staying under this this is i think this one is the better indicator at the moment of where we are than really just the Bitcoin chart because the altcoins are holding so strong at times. Because as you can see, we've got altcoins that are going up, but then we've got altcoins that are going down. Bitcoin still has the bigger influence in the market, but it's not the really solo influence in the market that it used to be. It's again, hence why its dominance is going down. I need to see this market cap either break below here so I know that we're going lower and again not just some kind of little wick really uh, break below and I might have to drag this out further I might have to push this all the way out to you know see exactly where it's going or I need to see it break out of this most likely roll, a, roll over a little bit come back back test it and then start to push upwards that is what I'm looking for all right a couple of news stories though it's not all bad news this is the good news that I was talking about. Blockchain firm uh, Animoca Brands raised $358 million to enhance Web3 and the metaverse. Hundreds of millions of dollars, ladies and gentlemen, is still being poured into this, play, this space. And it's because they're not looking so short term. They understand that, yep, look, we, it could be in a bear market and maybe for the next, you know, 12, possibly even longer months, it could continue to go down. But this is the future. This is where we're going. They can see that. They, they can see the vision. And so they put their money where their mouth is. And again, who would be pouring you know, tons of money into this space if you really were truly worried that long-term things were going to be really bad? That's just not how it works. Now, what's interesting is the people that got involved, so the investors, I mean, look at this. Smile Group, Stable Asset Management, Soros Fund Management, Wildcat Capital Management, Winklevoss Capital, 10T Holdings, C Ventures, Delta Fund, Gemini Frontier Fund, Gobi Partners, Greater Bay Area, Kingsway, L2 Capital, My, uh, 
Murray, hopefully I say that right, Assets, Pacific Century Group, and Parafy Capital. That is a lot of people pouring a lot of money in. And again, the metaverse, but it's not just the metaverse, it's Web3 gaming and things like that. Another one, VC firm Blossom Capital raises $432 million to invest in the cryptocurrency ecosystem. So, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars and they're going after all sorts of things, NFTs and Metaverse and DeFi, you name it. It's going right across the board. Microsoft have come out with a massive Metaverse move buying Activision for $69 billion. $69 billion, you know, that dwarfs these couple of hundred million dollars that were invested here, but a couple of hundred million dollars is still a lot. But Microsoft has bought Activision. And the reason they did it is they said gaming will play a key role in the development of the metaverse platforms. So getting very bullish on metaverse. And a lot of people are, but it's not the only space in there. And there's so many different metaverse things there at the moment that you know I personally haven't gone too crazy with any metaverse kind of plays. I've put a little bit into Sandbox. That's the one I'm kind of thinking will probably, it's my, you know, sort of, metaverse bet i suppose it's not the only one but out of the true metaverses like the sandbox that's one where i've uh, put a little bit of money and i'm probably going to buy a little bit of land i would think not a whole lot but just a little bit again just for the exposure but there's you know so many different metaverses out there that's going to be really hard to pick you know which one's going to be the biggest uh, but you know sandbox for me is the one that I like the most and so that's where I'm going to put a few dollars but it's not to say that I'm only putting money into sandbox and I won't put money into anything else it's better to have a bit of a basket and then find out what the true winners are after you know time and the losers sometimes again you cut your losses and put them into the losers now again never financial advice ladies and gentlemen I'm just telling you the way I play it I would rather you know, kind of take my time and then really be able to invest in the true long-term winners as opposed to just constantly chucking money at 10, you know, different random things and just, you know, hoping I would rather let things play out. It means I don't get the absolute lowest price and I can live with that, but it means my losses are generally a little bit less as well because I'm generally just playing with the established players and it's easier to work out which one is the, you know, going to do the best after a certain point of time and then you can just focus on that buying you know uh, the buying the dips and things like that but we are still super early it's not it's something you need to remember you know sandbox is all good now and it has been around for a while that's why i like it it's not just something that was developed kind of yesterday it's got some history but something new may come along and knock it off its perch don't discount that all right now it's not all super good news though 4,600 ETH, now that's worth nearly 14.6 million, were reportedly stolen from crypto.com and then money laundered uh, via Tornado Cash. So that's a little bit of a worry, but crypto.com does have insurance and things like that. So hopefully they're going to be able to uh, get that sorted and sort of cover the losses with their insurance. But that's a lot of ETH, uh, 4,600. Now it's not a lot in the greater terms of how many ETH are out there, but it's still a lot. Hence why you just need to be careful. I mean, crypto.com have been around for quite some time now, a number of years, and even they still have to worry about things like this. So, you know, buyer beware. Again, hence why they say, you know, not your keys, not your crypto. You really want to make sure that you, you know, have that stuff stored adequately. And what you decide is adequately is up to you. And I'm not saying crypto.com isn't an adequate place because again, I'm, sh you know, I'm, I won't say I'm sure, but I'm hopeful that they will cover that with their insurance and that none of their um, clients have to suffer that loss. But look, in the end, that has to get paid one way or the other. Even insurance uh, might pay it, but that means the insurance premiums will go up and then crypto.com will have to uh, get those fees from their customers in the long run as well. So just be careful. But also, this is the one that I wanted to really focus on last because like I said, I'm just not sure where the market's going, but Bitcoin leverage flush looms. Now, this could go either way, though, because it could be a short squeeze and everything pumps to the upside. We're going to have to wait and see. 
but perpetual futures open interest is at a historically elevated level, so it's higher than normal, according to Glassnode. The underlying signs are showing the market could be ready for a leverage flush. Now, it could be a short squeeze that ends up pumping everything up. That would be great. I would love that. I, I'm just not sure. Uh, I, it's hard to know. So we come over here. Now, it says it's not clear which direction the price is headed in in the next few months, despite the markets being primed. For a leverage flush again being primed just everything's leaning towards that kind of happening and this is a little bit different to where oh, if everyone thinks it's going to happen then it won't happen no this is different because it's to do with leverage when leverage gets too much one way or the other the big players will generally come in because they can and they'll push it the other way and make a whole lot of money our issue now is are, t are there a whole lot of people that are probably going long or are there a lot of people that are going short? I don't know, and it's hard to know. You know, you can get on there and look at the charts, but they can change from minute to minute, now to hour. We'll just have to wait and see. But again, that CME gap down here, I just, yeah, I'm not going to be surprised. I'm not saying we're going to kind of slowly travel and, you know, stay down here for long. I think if we do, it will be something like this. And I'm not saying it has to come up here, but I think we may sort of come down here, pump up a little bit maybe even get up to here or close to here and then we just have that kind of flash crash that goes down covers that cme gap and then boom we start to pump back up that is what i think is a probable chance of happening if we make it down to here but again ladies and gentlemen that is not me saying it's going to happen that's just what my gut's telling me my guts <laughs> have been wrong before and they will be wrong again please make your own decisions based on all the information you can find if you like my idea and agree with it awesome we're thinking the same but don't then you know get upset if it doesn't play out because it means i was wrong as well it won't be just uh you know you that was wrong it'll be me that's been wrong as well but again, that's why I'm not even going to make any kind of crazy plays down here. But I definitely have some buy orders in for some things if they go down to here. But if I'm wrong and we go down to here and the rocket isn't up, it's down. Oof. I want to make sure I've still got money to, again, continue my DCAing and hopefully have a reasonable stack of cash to buy when I feel like there's a true capitulation and everyone's finally given up. Because that's you know traditionally how these markets have always then had their turnaround and i'm not here for the you know to make a million dollars next week next month but if i could make you know a million or more in the next sort of five years then i'd be more than happy with that and you know depending on how the dollar's going maybe more than a million all right that's it from me ladies and gentlemen stay safe be kind to one another pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment oh god is the bottom in i really hope so and i'll see you next time